It's interesting that you bring up that you were thinking about winemaking techniques because I was thinking about non-winemaking techniques because I don't know any winemaking techniques. Okay. So first of all, I thought that they might have all been planted with a southeastern uh, facing. <laughs> but the thing that I landed on is that the head winemakers of all these wines... Are called Steve? No, they're left-handed. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to uh, another episode of Wine for the People. Uh, this is our blind wine tasting, uh, which, where each week we taste three different wines which we have no idea what they are, what the prices are, who made them, where they're from, all that kind of thing. That's what we're trying to ascertain uh, and basically find out how much we reckon we pay and how much we'd buy, just to indicate what we think of these wines, to indicate to you why you should buy them. From our dear friends at Different Drop, who kindly supply all the wines, and there's a wonderful discount code in the link below in the Discord channel which gives you a nice little kickback of the wines, gives this, uh, Different Drop people some love after supporting us, and it supports us too, so that's a big win for everybody. Yay! Uh, now, this week on the show, we are blind tasting these three different wines, which have been made using the exact same technique, which is a <laughs> very interesting little challenge, but I'm really, really excited. And if this is the kind of stuff that you like, is three... Uh, white, white guys upstairs at a, at a winery talking about wines and trying to guess how they're exactly they're made, please like and subscribe. Uh, it really helps us out. Um, but let's not muck around too much. Uh, and taste these wines. All right, enough shop talk. Time to drink wine. Um, wine number one. So we're guessing technique this week. I don't know any techniques, so I'm just gonna rumulate on it. I'm just gonna sort of like interpret the corporate structure and, you know, come into an ideation session and come out with a positive outcome for all parties. You following? Neither am I. Wine number one. Mm, lovely. Very pretty. Very floral, nutty, lemon curdy, lime zest. I've had such a will they won't they relationship with Chardonnay over these years. Oh, I like it too. Yeah. I really like it. That Goldilocks zone of Chardonnay that I talk about a fair bit, like not too buttery, not too oaky, just right. Um, tell it, and a lot of sulfur. So this is, I'm gonna say this is an exceptionally young wine, or it's German. Hinting, of course, that it's probably Riesling or Semillon. Just has a sort of upfront palate juiciness that Riesling tends to, to be able to tick a great box on. Um, really good little Chardy. Um, I mean, Chardonnay is always a good one to see uh, winemaking techniques. Uh, throughout because you know that's the really joy of the great for winemakers that you can really flex the muscles of how to actually make the thing. Uh, so this is going to be a good little reference point for the next three, next two wines to kind of ascertain which technique has been used. It's going to be $65. I reckon that is some boozy Chardonnay. Oh, I reckon the vineyards for this one were definitely planted with a northeastern exposure. Wine number two. <laughs> Wine number two, we're talking about a medium to heavy coloured red, uh, dense, dark, faded rim, a little bit, but very primary coloured. So juicy and juby and really fresh raspberry, like a beautiful fresh raspberry, really cool. Nice kind of subtle tannin. It's got some guts to it and great acidity. Really awesome wine. Cool. Sits up quite, quite high in your mouth in terms of like that Chardonnay coats your whole mouth, you get that like nice buttery thing going. This is sitting sort of like in the same spot that I would hold a lollipop if I had a stick facing forward out of my mouth. Like if it was facing to the side, I'd have it in my cheeks. But this is sort of sitting like middle of the tongue touching the roof of my mouth type deal. I would pay 30 bucks a bottle for this and I'd probably buy three bottles. Not only, only for the fact that I've probably got a lot of these in my cellar and I'd, I'm trying to find something that's slightly lighter bodied. Absolutely screams batonage being used by the winemaker. So really stirring that shit up because that's how you get things to sit in the middle of your mouth famously. I don't know the orientation of the vines though. I've sort of lost it on that one. So maybe there's been a bit of batonage involved in both of these, but we'll see how we go. Um, I'm just gonna go blend, because it could be a blend. It's got this like lovely, like perfectly ripe strawberry character. To, oh, really stupidly delicious. Like great acidity. Immediately I'm definitely in that kind of whole bunch area, just uh, indi indicated from that wine. Alrighty, wine number three. There we go, all right. This happens with red wines quite a bit on the show and in real life, where I'll smell them and my instant gut is to go to like varnish or yeah, like teak. 
furniture that has been really nicely coated. Really, really intense tannin profiles. Really young, really, really beautiful. I think it's got this like lovely young tannin that's quite, um, quite broad and really, really fine grained. It's like well, well oiled wood. Like really high quality wood with them. I think this is a really awesome little expression of cab. As to the variety, not too sure. Really kind of sitting in this sort of Cabernet's Merlot, potentially like a, a blend of Montepulciano or something in it. Um, rolling with about 28 bucks a bottle and I'd buy a bottle. It's just not my personal cup of tea. I've been asked to figure out what winemaking technique was used that is common amongst these three wines. And I gotta admit guys, I'm actually at a bit of a loss on this one. The only common thing that I can see here is the outrageous amount of acidity. I think all of these winemakers might have been left-handed. It's hard to be definitive on something like that, but just presented with the evidence that I have in front of me, I think everyone who made each of these wines would hate writing on a whiteboard because they're constantly wiping out what they've said as they're writing it. This will be the last episode if that's right. I'd like to announce my retirement from Wine for the People if these winemakers are all left-handed. It's time to move on to whiskey. I don't know, like uh, I've just finished wine if that's it. All right, cool. Uh, Varietally, who cares? It's a left-hander and I'll take six bottles, 38 bucks. It's been a while since I guessed that. Anyway, uh, you're welcome for the clinic I've just put on guys. And we'll see what the other guys think. I'm ready. Oh yes, that's right, I'm presenting. <laughs> Sorry. I'm ready. Oh, yeah. Does I'm not. ready. <laughs> now you say hello. Hi! Uh, <laughs> uh, welcome back. Uh, three wines here, and we yeah. have to identify techniques. <laughs> uh, I'm sure there's a particular technique that is, uh, you know, the unique one across the board. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm sure that there's, there's many techniques that are used in all three of these wines. Yeah, I mean, they're all probably crushed at some point. Pressed, fermented, um, <laughs> racked. <I've> bottled. <laughs> bottled. <laughs> I've been thinking about this. And my initial thing was a remark on how high acid all of these are and kind of like quite surprisingly so. And I was like, the only thing I could pull out of my ass, knowing that this is somehow related to this, mm -hmm. was early harvest. But I reckon I got it wrong and I reckon I know, I've been thinking about it, I reckon I know what it is. What is it? Amphora. Yeah. Ooh. I reckon all of these have been fermented in amphora. Is that a technique or a vessel? It's a vessel, but you know, <laughs> like amphora fermented. I'm guessing that's what it is. It's, it's, it's thrown it to the winds of chance. I don't mind it. It's better than my guess. What do you have? I went a whole bunch. I just went a whole bunch work because like that, that like that's stemmy, that could mm. be cab um, that's um, I mean a whole bunch pressed, whatever. It's a whole bunch is like I, I was thinking in wine making techniques, if we are incorporating vessels, that's actually not a bad shout. Mm. Because there I there is some good um, I mean, whether it be fermentation. There were some like oaky characters here, but that could be just like batonage and mayo, I don't know. It's interesting that you bring up that you were thinking about wine making techniques because I was thinking about non wine making techniques because I don't know any wine making techniques. Okay. So first of all, I thought that they might've all been planted with a southeastern uh, facing. <laughs> but the thing that I landed on is that the head wine makers of all these wines. I called Steve. No, they're left-handed. <laughs> <laughs> real. I like that. Real lectatorial. I like that. I really happens. like that. You got to have a special corkscrew to open them. All that sort of shit. All right. Well, all right. <laughs> should we find out what it is? Lucky. What is the technique? Fuck. Fuck. <laughs> Yes! <laughs> it's a vessel! <laughs> it's not a technique, it's a vessel! Oh, yes! <laughs> nice, Gets it dude. on. Nicely done. <laughs> That's really cool. Good pick. Fantastic. The fact that you guessed that is amazing. Like that, no, I'm not just taking that away from you. I'd argue that it's a technique. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a right. The, the acidity thing's interesting because that's what I was like, they're all the, the acidity in here is like a white wine acidity. I was like, it's so mineral and that's, I, I think the only thing I'd have pulled on for it. This, I even have an inkling that I might even know what that wine is. Uh, Dom Malona mm. does mm. Uh, Amphora Chardonnay, so that could be a good option. Ooh. Yeah, um, it does scream Chardonnay. Yeah, yep. right. I had 12 yep. for 65, I really liked it. That's I had six for 43, big into it. I had 12 for 40, big into it. Lucky? I'm not surprised at that clank there, Chardonnay. Oh, Nick Spencer. Nick Spencer. Nice. He's in a Chardonnay. Zoom. Nice. Chardonnay. And it's an Amphora Chardonnay. Chardonnay. Hey, hey, hey. Well done, everyone. <laughs> that, 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 <laughs> got, got the Amphora's thing. That's way more impressive <laughs> way than more me. Cool. This smells like oak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, so I thought I smelled oak, but it must be that kind of, it must have some mayo, it must have some batonage. Um, what an interesting way to be able to showcase like Amphora as well, this sort of, um, this you sort know, of clay <laughs> mineral acidity thing. 
You know how that idiot said it smells like oak? Uh, this wine was fermented and matured exclusively in sandstone amphoras for 18 months. Wow. Oak. No oak. That, wow. How that, that smells so distinctly sense. like Chardonnay without being in oak is a great like kind of way to just take the idea of like, oh, Chardonnay has no character as all what the white maker does to it. It's like, all that's done is sit in a, 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 a sandstone vessel that doesn't impart flavor. Mm. In past texture and like, other different things, but it's oh. like Chardonnay, that's what Chardonnay is. No, and it's delicious. still distinctly Chardonnay. That's really cool. I'm a, okay. Very impressive. I'm gonna have to change my feelings on Chardonnay now. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> um, now we know it's Amphora. Yeah. Now we taste the wine. Yeah. I think I know what this wine is. Uh, I think this is um, Brash Higgins Nero. Uh, I thought it was a Pinot, but. Definitely has, I mean. Same weight. Yeah, and that bright, fresh thing. Yeah. 30 bucks and six. It's probably going to be 45. I put 40 and 12. I loved this. I had yeah, 40 and 12 wine. as well. I really liked yeah, it. Very good wine. Lucky. Oh. Is. Oh. Oh. Yes. Boom. Boom. Hey, we, we all get the uh, the crown this week. Yay! <laughs> Everybody wins. I mean, if by all you mean two of you. Um, <laughs> Chardonnay. Bag of Chardonnay. Yeah, you got Chardonnay. Um, so you know you know Brash or Brad um, yep. relatively well. Is he left-handed? Yeah, look, no definitive, no definitive evidence that they aren't all left-handed yet. We're gonna reach out to the wine I think makers. Nick's... Nick Spencer could be left-handed too. We could be onto a thing here. It really hinges you know on the last wine. You know what's arguably a technique? Using your left hand. <laughs> I think that is absolutely More than a technique. putting it in some It's a left-handed technique. That's the thing. <laughs> hey, look, they organize cricket teams based around which hand they hold the bat with, so it's like, you know, it's definitely 100%. a technique. You're not Established gonna, technique. You're not going to believe which way these vineyards are facing when we find out either. <laughs> and lastly, um, Cabernet. My least favorite of the lineup. Um, Same. Bit, yeah, I think bit so too. too stemmy, a bit too black olive tapenade. I was into that Cabernet Merlot territory as well. Yeah. I, it's a bit wacky for my, for my tasting. That's mm. 28 bucks and one. Six to 55. Six for 38, 20 bucks and one, oof. 50! Uh, yeah, nah, not for me. Yeah, I think it might be a little bit steep, but I mean, it shows, shows the variety well. Oh! Ah, uh, yeah. This, this is, is Tassie. Pandora's Holy Pandora. shit, look at the puns on that. Oh my god! No, no, okay, so for reference, I have a thumb, right? <laughs> what? Like, look at that, you can see, that's nuts! Uh, it's worth it, it's worth the 50 bucks. That's a party trick. This is uh, Alpine Saparavi from Victoria. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So uh, Pandora's Amphora uh, is. Who <laughs> uh, cares? Look at the putt. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. Except I know I'm, I'm aware of the bottle. It's it's an exceptional one. And That's so hot. I believe it has changed names. So it's called Pira, but it started out as Pandora's Amphora. Um, oh yes. And that's fun. Uh, or the daughter of Pandora, which is Pira, which is where the sort of brand's narrative comes from. Um, and I'm trying to remember the winemaker's name, but he's the partner of the, of Joe Marsh, which with Billy Button. Do you happen oh, to know sure. which hand he wears his watch on? Shit, he could be left-handed too. <laughs> Whoa! <Woo! laughs> <laughs> but we will we will investigate for you. It will happen. What a silly piece of content! I love it. Cool. I have a thumb, right? Um, that's awesome. That's fucking brilliant. It's, it's if you really want to have a look, it's it's quite it is cavernous. <laughs> it is cavernous. That is quite the punt. <laughs> that genuinely, if you were renting that in Sydney it's, CBD, that would be twelve hundred dollars a week. <laughs> <laughs> Well done. Oh, uh, wine of the week, Nero. Uh, Nero. Yeah, that's the best. Yeah, Nero or the Chardonnay. I, I would, I would actually hold a candle more for the Chardonnay, but you guys were super impressed by the Nero, Nero. so I'm happy to go with that. Nero. Nero. Stunning. Sick. See you next week. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>